Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the first Sunday of the Blessed Month of Kiak, the second day of Kiak. Kiak started yesterday, and with that, we started the, the, the praises that accompany um, the, the month of Kiak. So during Vespers, we changed the time of Vespers to pray a little bit earlier at 6 o'clock so that we can start the praises immediately afterwards. And as kind of an overview for the month of Kiak, we have to look at the big picture. This month, we focus on the Incarnation, the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Sunday Gospels are organized in a way that all the readings for the Sundays of the month of Kiak are divided, uh, are taken from the first two chapters of the Gospel of St. Luke. And it's done in such a way that uh, the entire narrative of the Incarnation is told, and it's read in order, and approximately 10 to 25 verses are read each Sunday from the first two chapters. And so, in the gospel passage that we read today, on this first Sunday, we read of the events leading up to the announcing of the birth of St. John the Baptist. And we focus a lot on his parents, Zacharias and Elizabeth. St. Luke, in fact, is the only gospel writer who, who recounts the, the, the foretelling and the birth of St. John the Baptist. And so, there's a very clear pattern in his writing, in his presentation, in St. Luke's presentation, of what happened here. We see the annunciation or the announcement of St. John. We see the announcement of, of Christ. We see the birth of St. John. We see the birth of Christ. And in the middle, we see this visit that happens from St. Mary to St. Elizabeth. Two, two women who had unexpected pregnancies, right? And they meet each other in the middle. And so St. Luke wants us to have, to see this pattern, this comparison of Christ and St. John um, during this month, right? It's, it's a good thing to reflect on uh, for these Sundays. But let's focus on today. Today we celebrate uh, St. John, St. John the Baptist. And he's, he's an amazing prophet. And our Lord calls him the greatest born among women. What an amazing thing. Can you imagine how important St. John must be that our Lord would speak so highly of him. The greatest born among women. It's, it's, a, it's a profound statement. St. John is the bridge between the Old and New Testaments for us. He connects the prophets of the Old Testament <clears throat> to the long-awaited Messiah. And all of the Old Testament prophecies predicted the coming of the Anointed One, the King of Israel. And St. John fulfills his role as the last of the prophets, and the mold of the Old Testament is kind of like Elijah and Isaiah. A prophet has the role of correcting the people and bringing them back to God. St. John does exactly this. And he does this while reminding all of the people to prepare the way for the Lord and to make his path straight. So where should we prepare this way? Where should we make the path straight? Is it some city? Is it some location? No, it's not in the wilderness. It's, it's not in some place. It's in our hearts. St. John asks the people to prepare themselves. And this is piggybacking off of the last month of Hatur, where we're talking about the parable of the sower and, and tilling the heart and things like that. Prepare yourselves. Prepare your heart. Prepare your mind. We need to be prepared and Really, it's the activities that in our lives that need to be made straight. And one paves the way for the other. We, we can't just like repent out of thin air. We repent of actual deeds and thoughts and words and ideas that we hold within us. That's what we repent of. We repent of things that we've actually done wrong. So... When we start with this honest and brutal repentance, where we are hard on ourselves, honest with ourselves, we find that God himself pours out his mercy on us, and he does this in a way that we don't expect. He visits us. He comes, he's with us. We're preparing a way and making straight a path so that he can come and visit us and dwell within us. Our Lord wants to dwell within us. St. John tells us that God can't get to us unless we first clear the path 
for him to walk and to find us. And he reminds us that getting to God, or that maybe it's better said, allowing God to get to us is really pretty straightforward. The birth of St. John is, 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 a, is a marvelous uh, event filled with miracles that we hear in the gospel. And we're told that there was this priest, uh, Zacharias, who had a wife named St. Elizabeth, who, and St. Luke uh, is writing on, when he's writing this account, he says, he describes them very, very deeply. And I hope that we don't pass over this verse. He says that these parents, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. It's so important. While there are exceptions to the rule, we should always remember that that we are, that us parents, or one day the parents-to-be, if we want to have kids who are saints, and I hope this is a standard that we have for ourselves as parents, that if we want children who are saints, men and women who are strong in front of God and in front of man, then we must first be righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. It's a tremendous, tremendous task that's in front of us. One of the amazing verses that jumped out off the page when I was reading and preparing was the words of Archangel Gabriel to Zacharias, the father of St. John. He says to him, And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord. Not in front of man. He won't be this prestigious person in front of, like, he won't be a celebrity in that kind of way that we see celebrity. He will be great before the Lord. Many will rejoice at his birth. Today we rejoice over the birth of children. And it's very natural. We have these showers and these elaborate, you know, reveals and things like that that happen. And when a child is on its way, it's an amazing experience. What Archangel Gabriel mentions is a little bit different, though. He says that people rejoice over the birth of St. John because he will be great before the Lord. And that's exactly why we celebrate his birth. And we think about his annunciation. St. John the Baptist was righteous and holy before God. I'm trying to stress that point. I hope that we're, we're understanding. I'm trying to highlight that point. That he was holy and righteous before God. Before the Lord. He was told that his son, his own flesh and blood, would bring him joy and gladness. And we're told that people would rejoice at his birth. We're told that he would be great before the Lord. And I wonder if we raise our own children with these thoughts in mind. Do we raise our children in a way that allows others to rejoice in them? Or do we, or do people do the opposite when they see our kids? Every child is cute at the young age. What happens when they get a little bit older? Do, do they delight others? Do they bring joy? Do they bring joy to our Lord Jesus Christ? That's the most important. Do they bring joy to our Lord Jesus Christ when nobody else is looking? Will our children be great in the sight of God? And I'm not suggesting that we can raise the next St. John the Baptist. I mean, there can only be one. The greatest born among women. That's it. That's like the standard. But we can, we can possibly raise the next set of saints. This is not outside of our grasp. It is our holy and solemn task. If you are a parent or a parent-to-be, it is one of the few tasks that we should be taking very seriously. Zacharias and Elizabeth were holy, and it's no wonder that St. John was holy because of his parents. Each one of us has been baptized in our Lord Jesus Christ and into His holiness. The potential 
is there. The question is, what are we doing with it? What are we doing with this potential? St. John's life and the life of his parents is a reminder that many have suffered to bring this living faith to us. Who will take up the call to suffer and to deliver this faith to others? Who will follow in the footsteps of St. John and live in the wilderness and be cut off from the world? I'm not suggesting that we should really go to the wilderness if that's the calling for some. Sure, that's a fair calling. But that we should make part of each day a type of wilderness. We should cut off from the distractions of this world, even in the city of Chino Hills or Corona or whatever, wherever we happen to be. We have to give ourselves a chance to be cut off a little bit each and every day. But let's go back to the words of Archangel Gabriel. He says to St. John's father, you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great before the Lord. Zacharias was shocked by what he heard because his wife, St. Elizabeth, was too old to have a baby. Didn't make sense. And even though he was a faithful man, he walked in the commandments and ordinances blamelessly. He didn't believe. Sometimes, even when we are faithful, we're not always prepared for the amazing ways that God will work in our lives. We just don't believe it. We don't have the faith. Sometimes we set limits for what we think or what we can imagine that God is capable of doing in our lives. And it's a reminder for all of us to trust in God and to trust that we don't and we can't fully understand him. So Archangel Gabriel made Zacharias speechless until the day of St. John's circumcision. And that means for nearly nine months, he couldn't speak. He couldn't talk. Now, some of the wives listening, maybe my own, is thinking that man, St. Elizabeth, was a lucky woman and that her husband couldn't speak. But that was only for a period of time. That was only for a period of time. And after the birth of St. John, Zacharias finally wrote on a tablet and said, his name is John. And we're told that his tongue was loosed and he was able to speak again. People were so amazed by this event that everywhere they were asking, what, what will happen with this child? What's, what's the deal with this child? In the case of St. John the Baptist, we see someone very special. He was brought up by godly-minded parents. And from a very early age, he seems to have understood that he was dedicated to God. That he was special. And he was special because of the way that he prepared others to meet Christ. He taught others to prepare their hearts, to repent and to purify themselves, so that they would be ready to hear the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and obey. Now, another very important act that St. John did was to encourage some of his own disciples, like St. John, the Beloved, to leave him and to follow Christ. Now, that would be very difficult to do if he was filled with an inflated ego and he himself thought that he was just this self-importance, right? But St. John the Baptist had a humble attitude and it was clearly seen in one of his statements later on that he said, he must increase and I must decrease. That statement is what we can build our lives around. So the Christian life or I should say the life of a Christian, no matter our age, is a life of allowing Christ to increase in his influence over us and our witness of him to others. And while we allow ourselves to decrease, to become less important, it's not easy. When we listen to the world, we think that we are important or special because of who we are. And in the Christian life, we're special because of who we know and because of how we use that knowledge. 
one example of allowing ourselves to decrease and allowing the Lord to increase is, is that when I'm speaking to a friend or to a coworker who is lost or who doesn't know much about Christianity, I shouldn't shy away and think, well, you know, will this person, what will they think of me if I mention Christ for the church? I have these insecurities of how people will see me if I utter the word Christ. I have these moments of these moments of uh, turning my back to him. That is making myself important. I am the most important part of that equation. I'm making myself increase. What will they think of me? Instead, I might consider allowing Christ to increase even at my own expense. I might think to myself, it doesn't matter how I might appear to others if I don't appear loyal in the eyes of God. In the eyes of God, that's what's most important. I got to say, it was very difficult for me to start wearing the galabea and wearing the beard. But I see the blessings. I truly see the blessings of what comes of that. You become less important. Sure, eyes are on you all the time, right? You can't go to Target without a bunch of people looking you up and down and and like, just what are you? What's going on over there? But it opens up a lot of conversation. A lot opens up a lot of conversation about Christ and who he is. And why do I wear this cross around my neck? And sure, people may have their own conclusions when they come and see me, but it is truly a blessing that I get to live out these words that I get to decrease and our Lord increases. It doesn't really matter what I look like. It doesn't matter that I have the beard on. It doesn't matter that I'm wearing the galabea. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Right? But as long as I can allow Christ to increase in my life, what a blessing. And then you see the blessings in that life. This is the attitude of St. John the Baptist had. Sure, he was talented. He was a charismatic figure, a great preacher. He was an ascetic. But all those talents would be nothing. And we would never talk about him at all if he didn't love Christ more than he loved himself. I pray that our Lord will bless, will bless us with hearts like the heart of St. John. And I ask that we pray that we allow ourselves and our desires to always be shrinking so that the Lord might always be growing larger and larger in our lives. May the miraculous and powerful life of St. John the Baptist inspire us and, and prepare our hearts for our Lord through our daily struggle. And may future generations rejoice when they hear the stories of our lives and our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And glory be to God forever. Amen. We say-